I've been disturbed beyond words by the situation in the CIA. At the earliest, uh, Senator Jackson, I think, has made a very reasonable request. He's asked for all the information about that situation. I don't think we can give him that and just by giving him documents. I think it'll be necessary to hold a meeting of the committee and uh, have the staff give a complete or as complete a picture as they can of the information we have on the communist infiltration of the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. Cannot the FBI put these 130 men under surveillance yes. before sundown tomorrow? <coughs> Sir, if there is need for surveillance in case of espionage or anything like that, I can well assure you that Mr. John Edgar Hoover and his men know a lot better than I, and I might respectfully suggest, sir, than probably a lot of us, uh, just who should be put under surveillance. I do not propose to tell the FBI how to run its shop. It and they do it. Well. And they do it, don't they, Mr. Cohn? When the need arises, of course. And will you tell them tonight, Mr. Cohn, that here's a case where the need has arisen? so that it can be done by sundown tomorrow night? No, sir. There is no need for my telling the FBI what to do about this or anything else. Are you sure they know every one of them? I would take an oath on it, sir. I think the FBI has complete information about that the being communist, true. communist movement in this country, and that would include information about these people. That being true, Mr. Cohn, can you and I both rest easy tonight? Sir, it's, I certainly agree with you, Mr. Welch. It is a very disturbing situation. Well, if, you t if the FBI has got a firm grasp on these 130 men, I'll go to sleep. Do you assure me that's so? No, sir, I'm sure that the FBI just does its job well, that it knows all about these people, that it has told the appropriate agencies about these people, and that the failure to act goes elsewhere than the then just in the hands of the FBI. Secretary Stevens phone Senator Durkin. <coughs> Stevens speaking. It worked just about like I told you it would, and I can't buy it. I'm going to have to do something. It must, it may get drastic. I don't want to do anything until all you fine fellows that are working on these big problems tell me what you think. But I'm going to leave it where it is. I am not going to leave it where it is. I think I have been absolutely crucified and the services along with me. Since I feel bound by the fact that I can't comment on what went on yesterday. He is not quoted in the papers, but I happen to know what he said to some of the papers. And I feel I have to ask that group or the whole committee to reassemble and go back up there and say this morning that I felt bound. And the whole thing is so misunderstood by the press that I will have to make a statement, that I will have to make a statement and I may be even tell them that the statement, what the statement will be. Dirksen, who have you talked to? Stephen, last evening with Dick and Carl. Dirksen, how late? Stephen, I didn't get him until 11.30. I talked with Carl, with Charlie, and I talked with Jerry. Those are the ones talked to, and I told all of them my feelings. I said, this thing is just incredible. And the, and the press, because I can't explain what happened, is just absolutely going to say I am a yellow belly and have quit and have capitulated, and that is what they all do say. It will have to be straightened out now. I don't know what to do about it, and I don't want to do anything precipitate, but it will have to be done. The decision that I made uh, 
in this matter was my own personal decision. I was not influenced by the uh, uh, bulletin of the atomic scientist because I hadn't read it when I wrote my report, as the other members of the committee know. I was simply thinking of the man Oppenheimer and the effect that this decision might have on scientific development in our country. Uh, those things influenced me as well as the fact that I know Dr. Oppenheimer to be a perfectly loyal American citizen. He may be naive in some respects. I'm sure he is. But he's not as naive today as he was uh, 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, I couldn't find it in my uh, disposition to condemn him because I didn't find that he had made any great errors. It is perfectly possible that Dr. Oppenheimer was influenced by the moral uh, aspect of this thing that he had developed. When you develop an instrument that will kill 70,000 people at one shot, you begin to think about what you're doing and perhaps you're sorry that you were its originator.
How's the demonstration going today, Steve? I thought it went very well. Were you satisfied? Yes, I'm very satisfied. We uh, have a very restricted space here, so we have to sort of exaggerate control and let you see how much control we do have. I see. I'm puzzling about a bit. Uh, it didn't mean anything. You had a perfect control the time you were swaying. That's more or less just a demonstration of the control. That's the characteristic of the uh, ship if you want to use it. That's right. We have a have to fly quite precisely in here because of the limited space for an airplane. About how high did you go today? I think we went up to about 60 feet. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm too busy to be looking at any altimeter. You were pretty busy for a while. Well, I have to keep my eyes on the ground. Right. Everything worked out very good. Fine. Thank you very much.